anyone who introduces Our Lady into the life of a child is actually the work of the Holy Spirit. So I knew then that without a doubt Our Lady was with me and, and encouraging me and helping me to say the right things that, that she wanted to hear in order to save her life. If you find the time for Our Lady to say the rosary, you'll soon find that you have time for everything. Hi, my name is Frank Hamill. Um, I live in Coatbridge in North Lanarkshire, just outside Glasgow, with my wife Margaret. I have two daughters, two grown-up daughters. They are 34 and 33. And between both of them, between Marie Claire and Anne Marie, I have five grandchildren. I was a, a serving police officer. I served predominantly in the east end of Glasgow. Uh, I was only 24. I was just a young man when I joined the the police, uh, and I loved that job. My earliest memories of any kind of devotion to Our Lady were as a child, growing up in the, the family home uh, with my three brothers and, and one sister. My parents always had a, a May altar. I remember the statue, I remember the flowers, I remember saying the Hail Mary together. Although I wasn't fully conscious or aware of it then as a, a child, it's only looking back later into adult life that you realise that Our Lady was actually there. She was, she was present within our, our, our family home, right beside us, smiling at us, listening to us, uh, to, to everything that we had to say together. Um, just as she has with every family who, who pray together. In fact, I don't think that there's anything more pleasing to Our Lady than to, to watch and to listen and to hear children pl uh, praying together. For me, uh, also, the realisation that anyone who introduces Our Lady into the life of a child is actually the work of the Holy Spirit. I believe that with all my heart. And there is no better gift to pass on to a child than the never-ending love of a lady. For me, uh, one of the incidents, there has been many, but there's one or two kind of jump out at different uh, periods of, of your life. One for me is um, the statue of the Pieta. Um, the original, of course, is in uh, Rome, in the Vatican. And uh, I don't know what enticed or encouraged Michelangelo to, to sculpt such an amazing uh, sculpture. but. Uh, there is a life-size replica of the Pieta in many places, but there is one at the rear of St Andrew's Cathedral in Glasgow, a place that I visit regularly. And uh, a friend of mine um, who was a Catholic but hadn't been to chapel in his words, as he said, in hundreds of years, and he asked one day to come with me to light a candle. He didn't want to go to to mass or church or, or service, he just wanted to come and do that. So, of course, I, I took him and uh, we went to St Andrew's Cathedral and he knew about um, my devotion to Our Lady. And uh, the Pieta statue is situated at the rear of St Andrew's as soon as you go into the left-hand side. And he said to me, for anyone who isn't familiar with the Pieta, of course, it's Our Lady. 
and she's holding the body of Jesus just as he's been taken down from the cross. And he said to me, Frank, out of all the statues of Our Lady and in this amazing cathedral, I see this one and it's, it's heartbreaking, it's quite sad. And uh, why did you show me that one? And uh, I said to him, it is sad and heartbreaking. It's only natural to see that uh, and come to that conclusion when you look at the Pieta. The Pieta stands for compassion, compassion. And uh, I said, I see it in a different way from you because when I look at that statue, I ask, what is the message that that you're giving to me. What do you want me to do when I look at this uh, to pray? And I remember getting this overwhelming urge to pl place your hand on his heart, on the heart of uh, Jesus as he's lying in Mary's arms. Ask him to send you the Holy Spirit to guide you to the people he wants you to meet in, in your life and to listen to what they have to say. And then place your hand on the side of Our Lady's face, just on her cheek, to remind you to say those words with her humility, the same humility of Our Lady. And to remember it's not your it words, you're just conveying a message. And then finally, to place your hand on both their hands as they reach out and holding each other to give me the courage to do it in the first place because I'm not that strong without them. And um, so I'd mentioned this to my friend in a way to say, I view this statue in a different way from you because life is never sometimes sweet. Sometimes we'll come across adversities, none more than a mother holding her son dead in her arms, but to know that that help is always there. And when I say that, every, each time I go to visit the church, normally, or usually, within a, a few days, sometimes the next day, but I would say on an almost weekly basis, I do meet someone uh, who expresses or uh, decides to share uh, a problem or a difficulty that they're experiencing in their life, whether it be a health issue, a relationship issue, maybe an addiction, maybe someone's going through a, a difficult time. I don't need any apparition or puff of smoke or any guidance. I know that having prayed in front of the, the Prieta, that this is the person he's asked me to meet and to remember them. And then I return to my own altar at home that I have to, to a lady and Jesus. And I remember that person I place their names uh, on the candles at my altar and I ask Our Lady uh, to convey this message to Jesus and ask them to listen to the person who's spoken to me and, and, and to answer their prayer. I also had the privilege to visit Medjugorje uh, in Bosnia, Herzegovina and I'd heard about Medjugorje and some different stories and, and testimonies and uh, in 2019 I got the, myself and my wife Margaret got the opportunity to go with a parish uh, St John the Baptist in Addington. Five years ago in 2019 we uh, kept an open mind, we had no expectations, we thought we will go and decide uh, for ourselves what's happening in Medjugorje. On arriving there, it was almost instant. Uh, I would say within a few hours you could tell there was something different. And I could feel this overwhelming, absolutely overwhelming sense of Our Lady's presence and God's true peace. That the overwhelming sense of, of peace. I didn't need any apparitions. I didn't need to see a lady. I know that she's there. I could see it in the faces of other people, if that makes sense. Um, and I could feel it. Every time I stepped out the hotel on apparition, 
a hill or cross mountain. It, it, it was everywhere. I remember, like many people, climbing uh, Apparition Hill and how rugged the, the rocks were and underfoot. The conditions are quite sharp. You need to be careful. But I remember getting this uh, overwhelming sense to pick up one or two of the small rocks and and to take them home. To take them home, not as a keepsake or some kind of uh, memo to to remind me of Apparition Hill, but to take several of them home. I didn't fully realise why that would be the case or why I was being asked or a lady was asking me to, to do this. Was it to have a little piece of, of Medjugorje uh, at home? Um, as it turns out, uh, it was because I have them placed in my own altar uh, at home to Our Lady to have that little piece of Medjugorje at home, but always uh, the, for a purpose, to remember other people that you meet after you leave Medjugorje, to bring them to me, to, to whisper their names gently to me and I will hear them and listen to your prayer. To continue to, to pray the rosary for some people that I speak to because we all lead very busy lives, suddenly there's not enough hours in the day and they say, I wish I could find the time to say the rosary. And it makes me smile because you can find the time, 15, 20 minutes to say the rosary, maybe on your way to work, maybe after work, maybe during your, your lunch break if, if you have the time. If you find the time for Our Lady to say the rosary, you'll soon find that you have time for everything. My father is 80 years of age. Uh, there is two things he loves in this world. One is Elvis Presley and the other is the Divine Mercy. And uh, I don't know which one takes priority over the other, but I know that we have a family rosary on Zoom, and uh, which were very popular during the COVID restrictions where we couldn't, well, there was no contact with each other. And he started uh, to learn Zoom on the internet. And um, as I say, I have three brothers and one sister and my own daughter. And each of us got together collectively on Zoom. And he has a family rosary once a month. Um, so even if you say the rosary once a month, I would encourage you to say it every day and you will find great graces coming into your own life and your, your family lives. But that is a great point, meeting point for us. And we don't, <laughs> we're not in each other's company. We see each other on Zoom and that's the same for some of his uh, brothers. And he does that every month. And it's, it's amazing. You can feel our ladies presence through all our friends and that's just on a screen in Zoom so take the time to say uh, the rosary for each other. My hobbies uh, include uh, running, I, I enjoy running. One of my other hobbies is uh, buying candles because I know that um, when I'm praying like Many people uh, will light a candle to in honour of Our Lady. Candles for each of the person whom Our Lord has brung into my life with the guidance of the, the Holy Spirit. And, and to remember each of them, sometimes I place the name of the person on the candle. Uh, for me, it has more meaning. And I know that Our Lady can see it and can hear it. Also, as soon as I light the, the candle, and I see the flame on the candle, I believe with all my heart that Our Lady's angels are right beside me, encouraging me to, to say that prayer, to say that prayer together, and that she will hear it. And um, angels is maybe a subject that guys or men in particular don't really speak about. They'll speak about football and golf and any other sporting activities, but very rarely do they take time to speak about the holy angels? And it's something that I believe in 
100% with all my heart and that's why I buy so many candles because I know that just like the candles in my own altar at home um, that the angels are right beside me listening and saying the prayers with me just as I believe every time we light a candle to Our Lady I believe that she lights a candle for us too uh, in, in heaven so I will continue to buy candles um, if I have to take out a loan I will continue to do that to buy candles um, and anyone for any of my friends who come to me there will always be a candle for you in my altar. We should never forget also that although we have our earthly mothers here, some are still with us and some who have passed, we always have our Heavenly Mother, um, our Blessed Lady, who will always hear us. There will never be a time she doesn't hear you, even if there's times, maybe time passes and it's been a wee while since you've spoken to her, she's still there, she'll still be waiting and she'll still welcome you and never judge. Find her and you will look for her and you will find her. Uh, sometimes I think it's often the case, just like my own visit to Medjugorje and for many other people, she actually has a habit of finding you. My name is Michael O'Neill. I'm the Miracle Hunter. We're talking today about some of the famous Marian icons that are considered miraculous around the world. One of Pope Francis's favorite Marian icons is that of Our Lady of Lujan in Argentina. And the story goes like this, that the statue was originally from Brazil, but there was somebody from Argentina who wanted to build a chapel or a settlement dedicated to the Virgin Mary and needed a chapel there. So the statue was brought into port and animals carried the statue further to arrive at that town. Eventually, they needed to take a break along the way. And then when they arose in the morning and decided to continue on, the animals refused to move that statue. Now as a test, the statue was removed from their, their carts and then the, the animals freely went forward. So they took this as a sign of Our Lady that she wanted that exact spot to be the chapel there. Later, a great basilica was built and she became the patroness of Argentina. And this became one of the great Marian devotions from all of South America. And that's Our Lady of Lujan from Argentina in the early 1600s. Ten years of sharing the peace of Christ. Shalom World, God's own channel.